about a decade or so, the relationships between all of human populations to each other, as well as, as we look back in time, how we got to where we are located currently on the planet Earth. Okay, so you're referring to this, what, at a genetic level? At the genetic level. It turns out, of course, that our genes not only provide an instruction for how to build us, they also record the history of our families. And so by looking at the genetics, we can read our family history. Well, you referred to a small family of Afri early humans yes. who walked out of Africa, I think you said about 70,000 years Something ago? Something like that. It, the number is not completely fixed, but sure. that's about the right scale. So what you're saying then is that indigenous Australians, for example, are directly descended from that family that walked out of Africa. Yes, well, though certainly that's true for that, for the indigenous Australian family. But it's true for all of humanity. That's the, they, it's just a matter of when your part of the family decides to leave. Mm. So how does that, I mean, how does that have, I suppose, a bearing on racism as we see it in, the, in this century? How, how do we reconcile the two? Well, one thing that I think would be important is that this story from science should be receiving, in my opinion, the broadest possible propagation of the general public so that the public understands that when you look at that fellow over there who may be darker or perhaps his eyes are shaped differently from yours or the hair texture is differently from, different from yours, you really are looking at a distant relative. To me, it matters, I think it matters when you try to, when you come in conflict with people, if one of the interesting things about conflict is that, yes, conflicts in families can be severe, but most of the time that familial bond asserts itself even when there's conflict. And that's actually what we need as a species. Mm, so maybe a bit more education in terms I, I of the science? I absolutely think that this is more, that this is a critical story that ought to be more broadly taught in science, in the schools. And what do you hope the outcome of that might be? In the end, that maybe well, in the end, in, you know, in the end, science cannot determine how society behaves. Perhaps. That's just not possible. Science can inform society, and then society is responsible for forming its own beliefs around that. It is my hope that once this kind of information is more broadly understood, that perhaps people will stop and think about that some. And that's really all I ask. And maybe look for that nugget of morality that you meant to refer to. Is yeah, right? absolutely. It's just, actually, just think about that. Think about the fact that when you abuse someone because they look, don't look like you, mm. that's abusing a, a relative. That, that's a very difficult abusing thing to yourself. do. And ultimately yourself. In fact, that was one of the points that I didn't make perhaps as strongly in my presentation that from the point of view of Charles Darwin, abuse of slaves was in fact a moral abuse of oneself. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, in his, he would argue, is the greater, greater crime. Yep. Thank you very much. That's all we needed. Thank well, you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go back and do some serious